Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot show for you tonight. Tonight's topic is Woman, no man force you to be masculine. Let's do it. All right, welcome back to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. All right. I'm sorry if I'm masculine, but I've been forced to be masculine. When I was married or when I was in my, my past relationships and a man didn't wear the pants, I had to take off my skirt and put the pants in the relationship. If a man can't show up and can't be a man and an alpha, then guess what? A you woman to has to be that alpha. So a lot of men in my life forced me to wear the pants because they had their skirts on. <laughs> And this is what people don't understand, that when I have been forced to be masculine by men who were not alphas, and I had to show up for the family, and I had to pay the rent, the food, everything, I had to. When a woman is in a relationship where the man doesn't show up, she has to put the pants on. So I'm sorry if I'm masculine, but I've been forced to be masculine. Show me an alpha man that is in his true alpha, not in his wounded masculine, but his full-on masculine, mm -hmm. and watch me become a sweet, soft little girl. I need a man that is fully in his energy, masculine energy, and when a man gives that woman that feeling, that safety, that, that energy, that love, you can mm -hmm. feel it, then a woman deassembles her masculine energy and she falls into her feminine and she becomes a child with that man. But sadly, I have not met those. All right, welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. We got a special video guest in the house tonight. Introduce yourself to my audience. Hey, what's up? My name is Darren, uh, by way of Memphis, Tennessee. It's good to see you tonight, man. Thank you for even uh, having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you for coming on. Hey, uh, I shared a video with you, a one minute and 16 second video of this broad uh, talking about uh, she was forced to be masculine because the men that she dated in the past and even her uh, eventual husband uh, was not an alpha dog, was not an alpha man. So what do you think about those statements that she made? First of all, you, you can't be forced to be something like, you know, what she's saying that she, she's being forced to be masculine. No, she's masculine. Even though she's physically an attractive lady, you can see masculinity all over her face. She just she just leaks, you know, masculinity. And in my own humble opinion, just based off of what she said, first of all, you you attract these beta type men because you're masculine. And most alpha men won't have you. Period. Won't deal with you. Because you could tell that she's she's a combative woman. Even though, even just that, in that one minute clip, if I didn't know anything, just from that one minute clip, it, I could pick it up. I'm like, dang, she's masculine as heck. You know what I mean? But then when she started yeah. talking about these type of men, you know, uh, that that she said had they wearing the skirt, so she has to put on the pants. You know, she should have known that from the beginning of the, of the initial meeting, what type of guy that she was dealing with. But she made a conscious decision to continue to deal with these men, first of all, because that's what she, what she attracts. Beta type men who need that leadership, and most of them will find that type of leadership in a masculine woman. So even though it's a reverse role, you know, in, in a lot of cases, it works for men who are, who are more passive or maybe even passive aggressive. You know, then men who are kind of like you and, my, and myself, who are just regular stand up, straightforward alpha men. You know, we wouldn't have nobody like that, even as though, even though she's attractive. You know, she, she's as they say, uh, you know, yeah, you could probably have sex with it if that's what you're about. But if you're trying to build, nobody's going to be with no woman like that, except for a beta male. You know, who needs that type of woman that can stand up for him because he can't do it for himself. Yeah, and you're definitely right. She's attractive, but 
Uh, you also write that I wouldn't be interested in it because if she's going to uh, assume like she's going to wear the pants and I'm not alpha enough for her, then I, I definitely wouldn't be uh, interested in her. Now, this woman did not take any responsibility uh, for her uh, vetting the men that she eventually dated and, and, and eventually married. Uh, she didn't uh, uh, date these guys according to her values, but you did not hear her not one time. Now, perhaps uh, later on throughout the video, because that was only a one minute and 16 second clip, uh, maybe she did take responsibility, but I highly doubt it based on uh, the way she was talking in that one minute clip. She actually put all the onus on those men and said these guys were uh, basically sissified. OK, well, ma'am, you decide to date these sissified men because you thought that you would actually uh, change them or at some point in the relationship or the marriage that these guys would change. But you were in for a rude awakening. They didn't change. And so, therefore, you're on social media bashing them right now. I totally agree with you, man. And I'm glad you brought out that part because that was something else I was going to say, which was the fact that she didn't take accountability of the choices that she made in those men. And she keeps choosing the same type of man. So who's the common denominator? You. She is. She she's is. the common denominator. Mm -hmm. But every type of man that she's been with, that she claims, according to her own testament, that they all wore the skirt, so she had to wear the pants. <laughs> you know, so it sounds like to me some type of toxic uh, addiction that she's accustomed to, that she enjoys. She enjoys running. She enjoys being in control. She enjoys that. And men like you and I wouldn't have her. Wouldn't have And her. also, uh, also another point she made, she said she has never run across an alpha male. I wonder why. With all these men in these United States, and of course, you got alphas, you got you got you got betas. Uh, uh, there's a lot of men out there that uh, hold firm to that alpha category. For her not to meet someone in the time that she's been dating, look like she's probably been around a block a couple of times. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that, but but something makes me think that they're not going to bow down to her alpha mentality, and so therefore she don't find uh, them to be the type of man that she wants to date. But she wants to, to me, it seems like she wants to find a, a beta male, and then if he's not uh, coming up to her standards, then she wants to bash him after it doesn't work out. And I totally agree. You know, just another uh, lost woman out here, man, that's just, you know, blaming men. And, uh, you, know, you know, we're tired of it. In fact, these type of conversations are really on the diminish because we tired of talking. Men are tired of talking. We just letting women like that just keep talking. You know, at the end of the day, she's going to continue to be what? Single. Cause, or she's going to continue to deal with the type of man that she has been dealing with, you know? And then she says she's never come across an alpha male. No, nah, she's never been accepted or been chosen by an alpha male. Yeah, she done came across several, but they just look at her like you and I would. And just and go on to the next one because man, that's just that's just trouble. Just the way she looks in her face. Again, she's attractive, but you can just see <laughs> nothing to deal with that. Heck no, no. We'll smash. You know, if I was like that, you know, we not we don't I don't live like that. But if I was that guy, if I was still that street dude out there, man, man, that's it. You know, we I would I would do what I'm gonna do, have my little way with it. But as far as building. Uh, as you and I value relationships on uh, as far as building is concerned, never. Heck no. All right. Yeah, man, you know what? I agree with you. Hey, is there any uh, departing words you want to leave to uh, my audience, uh, whether it be women or men, uh, relating to this particular topic uh, that uh, I shared with you today? Man, I, I already know you, you, you are... Uh, spot on with your uh, conversations. Uh, I will probably just echo whatever you have say, already said. Uh, but my, my thing is, I will say this. We understand that 80% of the women only choose amongst 20% of men. And it's unfortunate that the 20% of these men actually represent 80% of us men. I mean, excuse me, 51% of us men that are out here, you know, that are single and, uh, uh, many of us without children 
um, and, and available, but those twenty percent of men that women choose among is is a lot of those men are giving us a bad rap. You know, uh, a lot of them ain't got the game right. A lot of them ain't got the business right. A lot of them, there's a lot of things that they don't have. You know, together, and uh, I just wish us men would continue to hold one another accountable, but even to a higher standard. You know, um, we. You've heard all of the talk, you know, and not just the talk, but the news, the things that are happening, all the, the women that, that men are hurting, uh, physically hurting. Uh, it's, 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 it's frustrating, you know, that we out here trying to hold up a standard and it's being fought against our own, you know, our own men. You know, uh, we can't hold women uh, to, the, to a standard if we ourselves are not being held to a standard. You know, and I and I just wish men would be more accountable, uh, uh, not just to themselves, but to one another, because me only men can validate men. And that's what's unique about uh, the Jews. The Jews, when a young a young lad or young young man turns 16, it, it is a big deal. It is a big celebration of manhood that they and, they, you know, we call they call it the bar mitzvah uh, celebration. But what's unique about them is that they set, they give that young that young man entering into his manhood an accountability, something to hold on to because they make it such a big deal. Nobody celebrating you and I when we entered into our manhood. It was just nobody was there. I wish that we could make it more of a big deal and uh, taking our young guys, young kids that's coming into manhood and having some type of celebration and giving them some, some a, a sense of accountability and responsibility to uphold an image of what men should uphold, you know, especially godly men with godly values, man. I wish that would happen more. And I believe women would easier or easily line up uh, with the standards that we're walking in. Well, hey, man, I appreciate that assessment. I stamped that right there. I sealed that uh, with the straight butter dating and relationship talk approval, man. Uh, I can't add to that. Uh, thank you. I'd like to thank you for coming on the show, man. And uh, I'm sure my audience would appreciate you uh, coming back and talking on any other subject, man, that you would like to uh, talk about. Man, listen, my last word is, brother. Had I known you gonna have on your eight P suit on, bro, I would have uh, wore something a little different. But this, I work out, man. So I, I had on my workout stuff. Didn't have time to change. But y'all forgive me. But I do fix up well. I, next time, I make sure that I uh, a little bit more suitable. <laughs> well, well let, well, let me say this uh, on Darren's behalf. Uh, Darren uh, dresses so sharp. He, he, he dresses sharper than a mosquito's Peter, so don't let him fool you now. He's in his workout gear, but I've seen the guy, uh, you know, dress in uh, top-of-the-line suits. So, But anyway, uh, Darren, once again, thank you for coming on the show, man. God bless you, and we'll chat later. God bless you, brother. Firstly, after watching this video, I want to fairly critique this woman's comments with specificity. You just watched Darren Tate and myself uh, go back and forth on what we thought about the comments that was made by this woman. But let me preface my comments and my critique of the things that were said in the video before making the main points. I'm 100% pro-woman, but that doesn't mean I'm anti-man. Because I'm a proud man and a 100% man with no feminine qualities at all. If I was anti-man, then I would be cutting off my nose to spite my face. And I'm not going to do that. I'm always fair and balanced in my critiques of both genders. And I don't have any biases against women nor men. I'm impartial when I critique both men and women. Because I believe right is right and wrong is wrong. And there is no in-between. I'm going to stick with this standard of critiquing on and off this channel, regardless of the topic, because that's who I am. And I'm not politically correct, folks. Now, after watching this video and listening to this woman, 
say she was forced to be masculine because the men she dated and even the man she was married to was not alpha men. Therefore, she had to take on the alpha role and she was forced to be masculine. Well, I have a problem with that because nobody can force anyone to do anything unless they are forced at gunpoint or knife point or forced with some type of weapon which, was, which would cause one to be in fear of bodily harm or in fear of the loss of life. And this was not the case in this instance. Therefore, this woman's statements of her forced to be masculine are false. Let me continue. Number one, no man can force any woman to become masculine. That's impossible. In order for a woman to become pseudo-masculine, she's going to have to make a concerted effort to learn masculine behavior, then mimic that behavior. But when it's all said and done, she's still a woman, and she's still not masculine inwardly, but only has an outward display of a pretended character assassination of a man. The masculine trait was inherently placed in males only by God at birth and not in women. This woman said that she has never met a man who was an alpha and that when the men she dated or even the man that she eventually married was not an alpha, she had to become the alpha dog and she was forced to become masculine because the men were not. In essence, folks, She's telling on herself and putting herself on front street, but trying to blame the men that she dated in the past. She said a lot of men in her life and past relationships forced her to wear the pants. Therefore, she became masculine and an alpha because they had their skirts on. Let me wrap this up. It seems to me that this woman did not do her homework. She didn't do her due diligence. She didn't date her values. Because if she had done any one of those three things, she would have known instantaneously or over a period of time during the dating process that neither of these men that she dated or even the man she eventually married was not the alpha dog that she sought according to her standards. But just like most women, who at one point in time in their lives, or even currently, that think they can change a man after they get married or after they start dating, they're in for a rude awakening, folks. You see, this woman realized that these men were not going to change and become the alpha dog that she hoped they would become. But only after it was too late and she was already heavily vested into the process. She should have determined their alpha status during the dating process and not even entertain marriage, especially if she had some type of inclination that the man she would eventually marry was not the alpha dog that she desired he would become. When this woman was married, it appears that self-preservation kicked in and she determined that she was not going to lack anything that was going to put her at a disadvantage. Therefore, she determined she would do the things that men traditionally do when married. And that's to take care of the home and to be a good provider for the wife and family. Listen, most women, not all, but most, in fact, a very high percentage of women feel that when they meet a man with potential, now the key word is potential, some feel they can help him get over the hump. They think they can change him or he will eventually change for the better and conform to what and who she likes her man to be if she dates or marries him. It's obvious this woman was dating the man's potential and it backfired on her. 
She didn't do her due diligence. She didn't date her values. She didn't do proper vetting of these men. If this woman was an investigator for any law enforcement agency, she would she would have botched the case because her investigation and due diligence to vet the men she dated and the man she eventually married was incomplete. This woman is partially or even mostly to blame for her relationship failures. Therefore, to blame the men she dated in her past and the men uh, not men, but uh, and the man she was married to and say that they were not man enough or they were not alpha enough. She failed to take any blame for her poor choices in selecting these men. And let me say this finally. Ladies, I don't care how fine you are. I don't care how pretty you are. I don't care how attractive you are. I don't care how beautiful you are. It doesn't matter how fine your body is. You cannot change a man. In order for you to change a man, he has to submit his will to you. Out of the hundreds of men, out of the thousands of men that I've known in my lifetime, I don't know of any man that has ever submitted his will to a woman to allow her to change him. The only way a man can be changed is by God. Is if that man humbles himself and submits his will to God and allow God to change him from the inside out. Stop trying to change men, ladies. If this man don't have the characteristics that you're looking for, then move on. You should know within a few conversations of asking him hardball questions and not walking on eggshells when asking him questions. Listen, both men and women, we all are flawed. We all have issues, but we as men and women need to stop blaming one another and really work on ourselves. I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you have enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. God bless you.